Jehovah Malak, Ola Mola Mad, Jehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Jehovah Erdanai, Jehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantakreta, Kurios Theos Pistos. Elda et Ehova, El Emuna Ehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios O Pantacrita, Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurio, Ehova da Bar Halal, Elohim da Bar Halal, Ehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon is un ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mohagion Pantacreta. Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zaon Logan Ogar Totios. Dulas Jesus Christos. Yon and Yon. Direct Emuna Bakar, Mishfat Shawa. The Mega Logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The sooner the better it is for us to wake up and realize that the very breath we take and the very reason we survive it's just not to be in the common terms of the world, but to show forth our true love to God the Father as Psalms 91, 14 quotes. He set his love upon me, the Hebrew word sagab. And this word sagab meant to say, high tower, inaccessibly high. Enemy cannot touch us. The sooner the better we wake up to live such a life. The life which has been told in Leviticus chapter 18 verses 1 through 5. And we read the word over there for Kea 2425. Where with Queen Sheba she came all the way to inquire about this life. The true life is 2416. From there on the next code is 2421 for life. Again, the next life is 2425. 
Leviticus 18.5, Lord God, the Holy Ghost has spent and kept long back what we have to live a life. If we don't walk according to the commandments of this earth, like the people of Egyptian or the people of Canaanites, God the Father says, walk in my commandments, in my statutes, guard them, protect them, then you shall live. And the word what he says over there is 2425 ya. And this life is a prosperous, vigorous life, free from death, free from sickness, free from any mannerism of disappointments. In everything, as he said, give thanks unto Lord God the Father. You know, those who love our Lord our God, all things work together for good. So you're going to mature enough to live a life of sage, inaccessibly high. Because this 2421 code from there, if you would come to 2425, the procedure, where we read in the strong code number, it says that the vigor and the valor what you have is something like the four beasts. Upon the same vigor and valor in the book of Joshua, chapter 14, Caleb claims, I entered into this vigor at the age of 40 to serve the Lord in the presence of God. And from there on, I never turned back. And that's what today people are not able to understand in verse 11. Because when he's talking, he entered the life from 2421 to live a life of 2425 because he knew that he's going to grow up in the great wisdom of the Lord by being steadfast. And he ever, if ever he lives, he wants his blood to be like the disciple of the word of God. And he wants to completely separate and build up for himself a wall of demarcation or separation from the world to say that he is going to live only like a disciple in Christ, if ever he wants to live. If not, he doesn't have any other life. That's very simple. The blood, if it has been driving us to be the disciples of the Lord or to go and make disciples of Christ after we graduate, that is, growing up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, from milk to bread, from bread to meat, then, we can also claim the vigor and valor of this true life. The life of 2421 to 2425. It's a very specific and it's a very unique life. Sakeb. The life and the vigor and valor that we are living is the life of the strength like the beast which is far away above. Because these four beasts were mentioned in Revolution 1 and Ezekiel 1. The lion, the ox, the man and the eagle, they replaced the fallen angel, the head of the fallen angel, Lucifer. And now we are having this vigor, and Lord our God says in Romans 16.20 that we shall trample Satan under our feet. So in order to live such a life, we have to be aware that we should be, at least like the way when Zoab hired a woman in Second Samuel chapter 14 and that woman what he has hired she is being called to be a wise woman the church compared to Christ as wife if the church also would be wise enough it would be like the way how God the Father would desire as Rebecca comforted Isaac so for his son, the third title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the church would be a wise one to comfort the sufferings of my Christ what he took on the cross. And he called us unto his kingdom and to his glory. And if ever we would walk worthy, as Apostle Paul reprimands in First Thessalonians 2, comforting and exhorting and giving them the right word of God so that we could present you or make you to walk worthy of his calling. Even Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would be comforted by the people that we are in the church age whom he has predestined us before the foundation of the world to conform to the image of Christ in love 
so that we could be holy, blameless in His presence all the days of our life. At least we could have this character of a wise one. At least we could wake up and understand and realize that our calling is again. The will and the work of Lord God the Father bestowed upon our lives is something unique and great. It's sagay. It's inaccessibly high. It's not just like the way the people who think in the human viewpoint. It is the strength what over here. Caleb claims to be in the presence of the Lord in Joshua 14, 11. And he says, Yet I am as strong this day as I was that day when Moses sent me and he claims my strength was then even so is my strength now for what for battles to go out and to come in you know how does he has that confidence to claim that he has the same strength the word we have to look to be strong what it is it is called to be Kazakh and the word Kazakh is meant to say day by day operating in the power of Lord God in graduating the mind of Christ or becoming the will of God. So the people who are Kazakh, they have already built a wall, a wall of suppression from this world. And they know in that wall they have to take the tools of digging the truth. And from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, by that we meant to say, as long as they have breath in their nostrils, this is the only labor of their flesh. And what is that? To strengthen the wall, what they have separated from the world. Because any fortification, any crack, Satan may have a chance to enter. So, the word over here, when it teaches to us Kazakh, he says that I am strong. Come back and look at the second hour, the third hour, the fourth hour. Or the first watch, the second watch, the third watch, you will find me to do the same thing. You will not find me engaging in silly, stupid things of this world, but rather what the Great Commission given unto us, if we are engaging there, it will be a great calling to the Lord and a great tower being built up. That's the only way of our life. He claims over here, saying to be strong in the Lord as Kazakh is the Hebrew word. And Kazakh is the word where it every day you do the same thing. Every day you carry the cross and follow my Christ. So these details of lives which have been recorded for us, for our edification, we need to learn, are we the church the wise? We need to learn, are we being deceived by the cunning fables of Satan, as he said, Paralagizomai and Fitanlogia, miscalculation of your true spiritual life. The Christ our Lord of our God has bestowed upon us Plausius riches. Are we really growing on to become the wise ones? You know how is our life? We are not at least to be every day wise enough to take the word of God. But you are like that woman of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. At least they, they claimed we will eat our own food and we will wear our own clothes. And we shall know what is that the food they eat and what is that the clothes they wear in the pictographical representation. That also represents again the only means why you eat the physical food, the only means why you have been given this great food is to daily become the disciples of the Word of God. We shall look that in the pictographical representation. But here when Caleb, he says, I am strong, Kazakh, he is intending to teach us the lessons of life. And in those lessons of life, he's saying, always diligently make a thorough search. You know, Moses was not content. He did not say to be happy where he was. He said, Lord, though I have spent with you twice, 40 days in your presence, yet when he comes to numbers, he says, I want to look unto you, O Lord, show me what you are. Do you think he was content? No, he wants more. He is eager enough to dig more. The people who would love to dig more, these are the ones who live the life from 2421 to 2425 code. These are the ones who have now a way of living in the vigor and valor of the energy like beasts. 
and they are living such kind of a normal life in the presence of God the Father, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, that they are not aware about any sicknesses to be worried. They are even not aware about their death. Because you know why? They are free from sicknesses. They are free from disappointments. They are free even from the fear of death. Because they have only one thing in their life. They have made a thorough inquiry to look what is the will of God the Father in the power and the vigor and the valor of His calling in the church age. So dear brethren, we shall continue after this prayer. When Caleb says, I am strong, he says that till date he goes to dig with his tools because he knows very well if ever he has breath in his nostrils and if he's coming back to his consciousness he would only realize to meditate upon the word of God that should be the application for us from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun or how much of the breath he breathes the application is only very simple he says Dig in the word of God. Meditate. Apply. Renovate the standards of your thinking. Know what exactly is the mind of Christ. Realize the will of God the Father. And be occupied in that. Because we are the children of God. If we are still rebellion, Ephesians 2.3 says, You are the sons of disobedience. But we are not so. We are the children of obedience because the people who are born again in Christ, those who partake in the elements of the Lord, the true Christians, the genuine Christians, and why we call them to be as a genuine scriptural Christians? Because they know if every day they partake in the elements of the Lord, the Eucharist table, for the purpose of making catalogia, that is to go on to preach and to do and declare the mind of Christ. That's it. They don't have anything else apart from that except to preach. Their lives will be a living example. Their lives will be a living exhibition. Their lives will be a living examples to the world, to the fallen angels, because they have in them the power and the vigor of the four beasts. Such kind of a true life it is we have to live. Don't still reside in the thinking of the earth. He said, if you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. And he wants us to go back into such kind of a place called as inaccessibly high, strong fortress wherewith no one can crack it. And he says, call unto me and I will declare unto you great and super things. In Jeremiah 33, 3, Nagad, I will declare, call unto me. And such kind of a great life is what we should be thankful to the Lord for giving us this completed kind of scripture to dig and to learn about him. But are we wise enough? We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin. It is a license to serve my Christ. Because we have to redeem every moment in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. If we are not redeeming the time in this chronological realm, then the Kairos moments, what have you spent? If it were not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, you will really be in a place of great misery because you are not walking worthy to the calling of the Lord. So we ask you to use the privacy of your priesthood. When explaining the privacy of the priesthood in Hebrews chapter 5, when he goes to say of many things we need to tell, and he goes to talk about the priesthood after the mannerism of Melchizedek, and he says that to us right now, we the believers in Christ being Gentiles, after the order of our royal high priest, the purpose of which he says why we have to use the priesthood, though so that we could be always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, is not that the popery of the Roman Catholicism which can make you to say you have to come and confess before him.
or the words for wrongly understood of James 1 confess your sins are false to one to another no your sins are confessed to God the Father so talking about the privacy of the priesthood over there and the labor what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has bestowed upon us he quotes an example about the Melchizedek and he says and about him and about the ministry of the priesthood is a lot that you need to learn but I look that you are dull of hearing, not us. You are illegitimate bastard Christians. The reason is that you don't want to confess your sins. That's what have the first medieval time. Still the Catholicism could be broken out into Protestantism by Martin Luther. Till that time we can easily calculate these words, dull of hearing. But now we have been given this privacy of the priesthood. The solid purpose of the privacy of the priesthood to follow after the order of Melchizedek because he was not having any proper origin. The same thing with the church. Now whosoever believes upon my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he shall be saved. He is called to be into the church. There is no difference between Jews or Greeks. All are one in Christ. So we need to learn very carefully about this order of Melchizedek. And in the privacy of the priesthood given to us in Hebrews 5, so that we shall not waste our time in silly stupid things, but rather we shall be the people to learn the right mind of Christ. So using the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound, which is not a license to sin, but a license to sow back our Lord, we shall come back and continue. Up to what extent is the church wise in the sight of the Lord? We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. What else we can have on this earth, O Lord, to cherish or to nourish or to have a great joy to claim apart from the word, being cracked in and taken in the exegetical standards of the truth and realizing your pictographical representation of the Hebrew alphabets Analyzing them in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to know the truth. What a great sagate joy we have, O Lord, that the world could ever pay for us. It's an inaccessible joy, O Lord. A joy wherewith being controlled of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, always in the presence of God the Father. A joy which always leads us not to worry. A joy which always tells us that when we are weak, then only we are strong in Christ. The joy which explains to us there is nothing for us to fear because we live the true life of 2425 in Christ. Such kind of a great joy, O Lord, which you have kept for us, for every individual believer who are rightly eligible, but being not told about those things, being not nagathered than to them the things of the deep ones of your thoughts. Much of the Christendom has been relying a lot upon the flesh energy rather than making their energy to be completely dependent upon the word of God. So, Father, the church are called to be wise and to be alert rather than to be like the foolish virgins who lost when you came. So, Father, in order to understand the lessons, at least from the Old Testament, we pray, Lord, as we're going to study these things, that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. The word wise which has been used in 2 Samuel chapter 14 verse 2, it says that, as we were reading yesterday as well, about the words pertaining to hate and love. The same thing over here as well we find in Numbers chapter sorry it is not Numbers but it has to be in the word Second Samuel chapter 14 and over here we look second samuel chapter 14 in verse 1 and here he says for us very clearly that 
after the incident of that great fight which took place then the way how she that is absalom ran away and then later on after that life of absalom we look how the things pertaining to david's heart which has been not proper being saddened up because of his son then joah being his servant he says that he sent to a place called as the koa that is a stockade there and fetched the word fetched is our old friend called to be lakak and the word lakak meant to say that you have nothing but to be like under the discipleship of lamad principle of lamad from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun and because of that lamad you build up your wall now the word lakak is a representation of three pictographical words or alphabets so the first one you have to be a disciple unto the lord without being a disciple or a lamad unto the lord which is equivalent to two greek words we have read that manthano plus didasco one hebrew word of lamad is equivalent to two greek words manthano plus didasco and of this process of manthano plus didasco from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun you have nothing but to separate and to build up a wall a wall of great fortification unto the lord so he fetched then a wise woman what is this word wise a wise woman is the one who has built up a complete separation from the world a wall or the word kokma what we call the first one is you build up a wall and what is that you build up a wall separation from the standards of this earth as lord and savior jesus christ in isaiah 55 he says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts my ways are higher than your ways in isaiah 35:8 he claims his ways are like the ways of highway of holiness so you find over here a word called to be something as a complete separation demarcation there is a lot of difference you have to be very careful about this word dear brother being wise in the lord as we read yesterday hatred followed by love a love means it's a privilege to protect and to cherish and give because of that great privilege given to us to take care of our family that's the word ahab we read that and what is the word hate the word hate is nothing but the ways or being turned for the sake of having for you not to pierce with the thorn So whenever you walk you get a thorns on your road what do you do you just just divert your ways from that and you go on the smooth path so the word hate is nothing but the words which are the lord of a god has given they completely pierce your heart it's like the pricking you know how to use this word the thorns which have been kept or the crown of thorn which have been kept upon my lord's head You know now, when you are not in accord with the word of God, in align with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you are not in the things pertaining to the mind of Christ, the word of Lord God says, correct it. And that's as good as kept upon your head a crown of thorns which is piercing your heart, which is, which is piercing your head. So now the word of Lord God is alive and powerful it speaks to you and it demands if you are not so in such and say such way or the demands or the prescription demands of the bible the hebrew word choke called to be statutes if you are not able to meet this prescription demands then it is as good as those thorns pricking your heart pricking your inner man pricking your soul pricking your head It's really dear brother and the word hatred sane meant to say you try to divert those thorns not to pierce your inner man 
not to pierce your consciousness, not to pierce your heart, your lip, your emotions of thinking. And what you do, you become a hard consciousness, seared consciousness. So why you hate the Lord of a God? Why you don't love him? He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. The word is very simple. If you love to behold my presence, if you love to be with me, if you love to be in a standards of taking care of this great gift given to you from God, the word of God, the glory of God, reduced and written for us in the word of God in the Bible, 66 books. If you love to behold the presence of this word of God, then it's a privilege for you to protect it and to cherish in it. This is love. And what is the opposite? The opposite is sane. That is whenever the word of Lord God is pricking you, what you are trying to do, you just don't take the pricking of it, but you would just comfort yourselves to be away from the pricking of that word. And you can now relate every mannerism of the thinking of man on this earth, what it is to be pricked and where it is we prick. And why it is we spend our time with the people who love to appreciate us or talk about us. And if the one who is trying to reprimand and correct you, you hate them. Why is it? The same thing happens in your life as well. The word of Lord God is not going to appreciate you till... You could move from the life of 2416 to 2421. And 2421 is a demarcation life where God the Father wants you to grow from super grace to ultra super grace believer as 2425, the life which has been in the power like the beast. The representing of the power to trample Satan under your feet, no matter what. You're free from sickness. No matter what, you're free from death. You're free from disappointments. There is nothing that could hurt you a lot. Because you are living now in the vigor and valor of the power of my Christ. So such kind of a life is what the Bible has been designed for every believer. But what we are doing, we are not accepting the correction. Where in the pulpit today there is daily Bible teaching. Where in the pulpits today we are able to make up our life according to the word of God, carrying our cross and following my Christ. Where in the pulpits today we are able to take up and make disciples of all the nations when you grow up as grammatias. Where in the Bibles you are daily partaking in the elements of the law. What the Bible says, where we are practicing today to say women shall not have authority over the men. And you say that's null and void. Where? Aren't you hating my Lord? You are just trying out those pricking things which could prick your soul and heart and divide between your soul and spirit. As the word of Lord God we read, Zon Logan Ogar Tautios. You live because of the word of God and that word of God makes a difference between the soul and the spirit. It differentiates between the joints and the marrows. It differentiates between the motives of your heart and critics of your thoughts. It clearly makes crystal clear differentiation because with the word of Lord God there is nothing you can say that though you are in darkness I am in light. If you are in darkness it says you are in dark. That's it. You may say, no, Lord, till now I was in the light and now I became dark. No, you are in dark, you are in dark. Light is light or white is white, black is black. That's it. The word itself, fortizo in the Greek, meant to say to shed light. When the light has been shed, the darkness runs off. So you cannot say I will be in the two opinions. No. Therefore, the word which pierces your heart... And you hate it because you don't love to keep your feet on the thorn. You don't love to walk upon the thorns. 
won't you make to see that you walk in the other way? But Lord our God says in Luke chapter 13, the straight road, it's very hard. All would love to walk, but they cannot. Only few would make it up over there. The reason is that it's a hard road, a road of thorns, a road where it corrects. It's like a mirror. It shows what you are in the image of the word of God. And we cannot be hypocrites. We cannot use the quiet strength of our Lord God to become chameleon believers. The energy of Kovach which has been given to us as mentioned in Joshua 14.11 which we shall take again. The Kovach strength, the vigor and valor of that strength, what is mentioning? That strength is something superb. Either it can cause you to become conforming to the image of God at one end or the power and the vigor and the valor given to you, you would either be like a chameleon Hypocrite, changing your colors, but at the same time you cannot be both. Either you are conforming to the power of God or you will be chameleon. But here with authority when he says, I have built up a wall, I am using my tools every day. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, the word Kazakh in the Hebrew, he meant to say that I am not a chameleon. I went along to follow closely what are the commands of the Word of God. Even today, the solutions to the world where they have been fickled up their brains in the fickle of the thinking. You know the only solution, the Word of God. The people may think the solution may be vaccine, the solution may be this, the solution may be that. The solution may be new order of the world. Age is past, age is future. And this age which has been following now from the 69th to the 70th week, the gap between that, the church age. In any age, in the past, in the future or right now, the solution is this infallible and inherent word of God which has to be inculcated by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. God the Father does the sending. God the Son imparts the bona fide gift. Lord God the Holy Ghost uses only those men who are faithfully prepared in the ministry of the Lord. Sending is being done from God the Father. The same description in the book of Revolution chapter 2 and 3. The seven stars from the right hand of God the Father. They come from God the Father. The duty is what? To represent like Caleb, with whole of their heart. They represent like Joshua, to follow the Lord. To be like the way how Moses was in the presence of the Lord God, to be called faithful in all of his house. There is not a humble one like him. In Numbers chapter 12, we read that. So having such kind of a testimony, having such kind of a faith, looking now unto Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who said, My duty and my meat is to do the will of God the Father. And this is my meat, he said, to complete the will of Lord God the Father. So we have over here something to learn. In 1 John 2.6, it is no longer like the past, but it is the way how Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ set forth for us we need to walk. Not even like Paul or Peter or James or John. It is what Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ walked, so we ought to walk, how he has walked. He said today and tomorrow, and the third day I will be perfected. He said as long in a, in a day you have twelve hours for day, twelve hours for night. As long as it has been called the day, you need to do the works of the Lord. He said, as long as I am here on the earth, I am the light of the world. He said that He is the resurrection, He is the life, He is the true one. And He has been assuring every believer to wake up and understand the power given to Him of exusia authority, so that with that exusia authority, we can go and make disciples of all the nations. And the way how He walked, He was born in the Spirit. So we have been born again in Christ, then the very moment itself, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, controls us till we sin.
But you know very well you do sin either by thought, word or deed and you lose your fellowship. Therefore the privacy of your priesthood to get back into the fellowship of the Lord. And after the order of Melchizedek he explains and he says there are a lot many things for you to teach. But we look that you are dull of hearing. So using the privacy of your priesthood to get back to the fellowship of the Lord and do the will of the Lord. Why? Because you have to go and live the second way of life. The life which is something far superior, Sagape. The life what we live should be Zao Sagape. It's not Bios. Like the way how Queen Sheba she came all the way to inquire. Our life itself is now Sagab. Psalms 91.14 The same thing we read that in Isaiah 21, Isaiah 41.21 again. He is going to Sagab. Again in Isaiah 2 we read the same thing, isn't it? All the mighty men of the world and the things of the world are nothing because we have Sagab God. He is inaccessible. He is superior. He is high. What a great privilege we have to serve this Lord on this earth. And we should be much thankful to the Lord of our God in the church age because every believer is being made to be the temple of Lord God the Holy Ghost. Every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what we are now, we are called now to be the temple of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord God, the Holy Ghost resideth in us. No, you not, he claims the question. And we are yet far away to serve Christ in truth. We are really very, very far away. And that's a problem for us. If the same privilege of the revealing mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would have been given to the Jews, which Moses claimed before God, I wish all of them would be over here, the prophets. When Elda and Medad did the work of the 70 men upon whom the Spirit was being poured out, taken from Moses. He said, I wish everyone could be the same. If everyone would walk in the standards, what Lord and, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in Leviticus 18, 1 through 5, rather than following to the stupid things of this world, that is pagan idol worshippers. Their ears, they can't hear. They have eyes, they can't see. They have mouth, they can't talk. They have nose, they can't smell. They have hands, they can't lift up. They have legs, they can't move. So is their doctrine. So is their thinking. So is their teaching. But we have the true living Lord of our God. And he says, in the cloud of pillar, in the cloud of fire, he guided them, he led them. Such a great true Lord of a God, he says in Leviticus 18, Follow my commandments, know my statutes, depend upon that, live in it. And when you're going to protect and look my commandments, my statutes, my teachings, my thinking, you have nothing to lose, but rather you will live a life of sagape. 2425 Sagab life, the life of your vigor and valor, completely in the energy like the same standards of the word called to be like the beasts, the four beasts. And when you're living such kind of 2425 life, he says, free from sickness, free from death. But we are not loving our law. We don't prove in the covert strength, in the vigor and valor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we are really representing my Christ. We are not loving our Lord. So, the word to love is to have a behold expression in your face. That you love to be protecting the things handed over to you. You love to cherish in that and you love to nourish in that. No matter what, you will be always there in the energy of Lord God the Father to protect the word of God if you love the Lord. Because you know that love which God the Father has given unto us is from God the Father. It is not by our own. 
and the love what God the Father has shown upon us, it is what we are being constrained in our hearts to show forth the same love, because His love is something superior, which no man can imagine. That love wherewith He has bestowed, you know, man on this earth may be a favorable one to the goodness and the kindness shown by other, thinking that what a kindness of standards he has in his life. And you may become a fan of him when he shows to you such kind of a kindness and goodness. But you are not able to realize the kindness and the goodness of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherewith he said, Though you sin, the way have the gardener pleads to the master, asking, Give one more year, O Lord. And in that one more year, again he comes to give you. He wants to dig and he wants to put back the manure. And he wants to see your fruit. Even till that time, you know, first thing, warning, discipline. You don't correct, he's going to give you intensified stage of discipline. If you don't correct, then the third stage, sin unto death. Till that time, though you grieve, squelch, wax, and lie, he is still suffering with your manner, strophe for Rio. We read that in Acts 13 18. Your characters, your thinking, your way of life, and you don't have fear in you, the fear of the Lord. So he said in Psalms 50, verses 14, then we read in verse 16, till verse 16, from verse 16, we have been reading what it is to become a scribe if you are a wicked seeing that you hate the instructions of me, and you throw them behind your back, you cast them off. So no matter however he loves you still, you still rebel and reject the word of the Lord. You still reject. That's what your life is all about. And you're rejecting to such a sense that though the wisdom woman over here, when we look, comparing to the church, that you have to be a wise woman, you have to be a woman like Rebecca to comfort Isaac. And the word is recorded over there for the very purpose to know tomorrow the church should comfort Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for the church, as the way the servant declared, the word says so fair, he, count, or he recounted and told to the purpose of Rebecca, what his master Isaac was. Tomorrow, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will give an account on upon every believer through the pastor teachers whether the pale wonders of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have been made known to the church so that the church should be impressed and fall in love with Lord. <laughs> Therefore, he simply, he said, I am holy, even you be holy. He just quotes that verse. In First Peter, when he's writing, he said, He is holy, so you be holy. Know the works and the deeds of my Lord. You need to walk like my Christ. You need to be like that wise woman who can build her home. A wise woman buildeth her home, a foolish one destroyeth it. A woman wherewith now we have to assign every member of the church age to go back and to do disciples to my Lord. You know where you're spending your time. You're spending your time for your belly. But you're not spending your valuable grace of God to live worthy to Christ. If not, you would be grown-up grace. You would have been like a grown-up grammatia as in this grace bestowed upon you. Do you think are you spending your time worthily unto the Lord? Are you spending the grace of Lord God to His grace so that He could say tomorrow, Lord, while I was here alive on this earth, You protected me in every mannerism of the things and I used this grace only to be for You like a scribe and doing Your work and declaring Your word and making known to the church all the great deeds of the Master in heaven. Could you say that? You will have a tough time, O Lord, o, o dear brethren, before the presence of my Lord. You will have a tough time. At least you can find this woman who is called, who has been given. And what did she do? She had wisdom. So the word kakma in the sense meant to say first a demarcation of the wall. And under that wall she is having the authority of a palm or the hand. 
And what is that authority of the palm for the word kakma, the second pictographical representation? Why it is the palm? The reason is that you have to use your hands to become the scribes. And now the people may ask, how about the places where there is illiteracy? Where there are people who do not know how to read and write? The first thing when William Carey came to my country, India, over the river Hooghly, he started a school. He did not go to start a theological seminary college. And there he sustained in the work of the Lord God for 11 years to find his first convert called as Krishna. And he was not a man with miracles or healings. But in return, his own family did not be cooperative to him to do the work. His first wife and then his children being dead. And today the people stupidly, they allow to talk and say, if we don't find miracles, if we don't find healings, if we don't find the things that are happening for us, how would the unconverted or the unbelievers would believe in Christ? We should show them a sign. And Lord God says in the book of Matthew chapter 12, wicked generations need a sign. And to these generations, they will not be given a sign apart from the sign of Jonah, the prophet. Who will seek and ask for signs? Wicked ones will ask. So, William Carey for 11 years, he did not go for miracles, he did not go for tongues. Because the completed can of scripture teaches to us that they have been halted off, seized off. But now these people, they are behind the miracles, the false things, the healings, the tongues, which are absolutely lies to the core. And they haven't been free from such works yet. They think they can build their ministry by such signs and wonders. No, dear brethren, Lord God, the Holy Ghost useth nothing but the Word of God. Because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth. Lord God, the Holy Ghost useth in you nothing but the truth, the truth, the truth. Though it might have taken 11 years to get the first convert, he did not flee. He did not run away. He waited upon the Lord because the thing what he has converted over there, Mr. Krishna, the first convert, he stood till to the death of his life to be a witness for the word of God. He did not run away again. He did not turn into the same customs of this foolish thinking. But today people emphasize that they should be in the palm of their energy. If we ask them to become scribes, they would say they are not literates. They don't know how to read and write. But look upon the same example what Dr. William Carey has done. He established a school, not the theological school, a school where they could read and write in their own languages. And he fought long enough even to eradicate Sati system and even to have an introduction of English medium in the schools. You can study that in the Wikipedia if you don't have information. And even if it is not there, then go back and search some good historic, historical books about the biography upon the life of William Carey, you will find it. Introducing many things, the banking system, the railway roads. He was a botanologist. He did many things, but he did not do miracles, he did not do wonders, he did not do healings. As the crowd today, they look, they have miracles or healings or wonders. But what did he do? He made them to become the scribes. He wanted that. In order to make them scribes, he knew he should require a school. And he went along by the gift given by the Lord God, the gift of these languages to be mastered up. He translated even Ramayana into their languages and he gave. He translated even the Sanskrit into some dictionary and he gave. But the work of him was burnt out. Again he built back. 
he did not keep quiet as today we people think that it is not needed for us it is not our cup of tea we can just keep aside if once it is gone it is gone and there is no need for us to look on that or concentrate on that and we love to do the stupid things and we love to spend our time in the details of life do you not think we should go and visit the nature do you not think we should go and enjoy our life with our wives you know all these things they talk but william carey was not a man when they burnt off his first converted work again he started after it which was a work for 10 years again he started that's the love towards god he knows very well the people are perishing he knows the prayer what lord and savior jesus christ prayed the first phrase on the cross father forgive them for they know not what they do because constantly satan's attack is to see that you don't give them the word of god you enjoy with them all the details of lies when there are no miracles you say go on to do miracles go on to do the gimmicks go on to do the things you enjoy with them ask them to come and carry three weeks some wine or some water some oil enjoy with them spend your time with them but don't give them the word of god when you are trying to give them the word of god it will not allow you no matter whatever may be the circumstances after your 10 years of work being burnt off man would say no it's not possible but this man was not so he continued he did the work again because he had that love towards christ and we people stupidly count our lives based upon the reasonings of men below the 2416 way of life the stupid way of life the ordinary way of life the thinking where the people mind is the thinking and they allow to talk about the thinking of men and they allow to represent the thinking of men and all vain philosophies all standards of positive mental attitudes all standards of reasoning they allow to have such way of life but they don't have the real way of life what the word of lord god is all about talking to us and they haven't corrected that way of life still because their life is only 2416 their life has been predicted in the standards of 2416 but they don't have the life what the word of lord god demands when he said the true life is 2416 he has given us the pattern to reach 2421 how the way how queen sheba she came and she inquired all hard questions and that's the life what has been intended for us inquiring the true life inquiring the true questions inquiring the true thoughts and there at least for the old testament it was a life of 2421 that's what it ended but we now the church cannot be in such a way of life our life is something far high and greater our life is 2425 the life what he said in book of leviticus chapter 18 verse 5 for that reason what we should be we should be wise ones and what will the wise one do they will be first in separation from the world the wise one has only one thing in their mind first demarcation and build up a wall the wall which you have separated they come to do with the palm of the energy of their hand like the scribes and they don't have anything else dear brethren their duty is to become scribes because the wise ones in the lord are scribes therefore he said in matthew 13:52 joining as disciples grow up as scribes grow up as grammatias in the lord and furthermore we look he teaches to us after this word scribal one the third pictographical word over there or alphabet over there is the blood sign of streaming flow of the blood so wise ones they demark they be free from the worldly standards and not only that these are the people the word of lord god calls they have in their blood nothing to become but scribes unto christ 
But the word of Lord God teaches to you repeatedly. Grow up in grace. Join as disciples. Grow up into grammatiers. But you don't be wise. You're not wise till you don't become scribe. You're a fool. You're spending your valuable grace of Lord God in stupid things of this earth. So here we have a woman in Isaiah chapter 4. This woman, they also have to talk about the reproach which they want to be free. But this woman, they are saying now, we shall eat of our own, we shall drink of our own, except just we be named by your name. The same thing what we are looking today in the church. The name pertaining to the word of God in this church. So what is that name we have for us? So he says about this woman in Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. And he says that, what is that they will eat? And we have to know what it is that we actually eat. The eating procedure, what has been said over here is very, very important. And he says, the first one, they hold fast. Again, the word hold fast is Kazakh. So, they build up a wall, they use their tools, and from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, they have nothing but to do the work of the Lord. The same thing what we read in, Josh, in, in Joshua chapter 14 verse 11, saying that, I am strong, that's Kazakh. The same thing over here. The word over there is 2389, but over here it is 2388. So, seven women, the word seven is again, you know very well, it's a perfection number. So, the word seven meant to say, the thing what they munch, the thing what they have in their tent, the thing what they have to look through their eyes. So, whatsoever they munch, whatsoever they have in their tent, and whatsoever they have kept their eyes upon. So, he says, they hold fast only to build up a wall by taking their tools from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to munch and to take perfectly nothing but in their tent or in their flesh through the perception gate of their eyes the word of God. And women and men, and here he says seven women in man one. So the L of strength for the woman followed by the seed of sperma and the munching process. Women and men, till to the seventh month in the baby, they will be almost all the same, except some things to be changed later on. So here we find in the Hebrew pictographical representation for male of a female. First thing, it is the aleph, even for the man, for the female, the sperm, even for the man and for the female, and the munching process even for the male and for the female. So it's the same. So he says, in seven men, seven women in one man. And what is the word one? Again, it is he who has built up a wall and he gets every thought into captivity for Christ. Or in his every thought, he has nothing but Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be the number one. So when they get in to seven, seven women into one man, it meant to say the man has built up a wall to get every thought into captivity for Christ. And he says, in that day, and what do they say? Now they have something to say. What is the word Amar? Amar meant to say they have in them a blood which flows. And the blood is saying in them, we shall become disciples. That's the word Lama. The word Amer meant to say they have in them the blood and the symbol of blood calls them to say that we will be the disciples. They will become Mantano, so teachers. So they're saying, we shall say of the bread of us, we shall eat. And now what is the bread? And what is the process of eating? The pictographical representation for bread is first Lamad, the stick, the steeping, the, the shepherd's staff of authority. And the bread, what they're going to take now, they have been built up like a wall of separation because their blood is talking only to be disciples. So if you are eating your bread, be sure 
you are consuming that food as Lord God said for eating and drinking also give glory to Lord and if you are eating your bread you should be careful to know that you have to be disciples of the word of God if not don't eat your food why do you want to eat your food why can't you be in a process of not eating the food you know you say we cannot because we have to eat thrice a day but for what you are eating that why you should eat that food to sustain your life, isn't it? If you have your stomach filled, you are going to revive the life of it. If your stomach is empty, it's as good as dead. So what is the stomach that has to be filled? Only your outward appearance? No, your inward man. So he says, the bread is nothing but the lamad stick, the wall which you have built up, and that wall will be the blood that circulates in us. So if ever we are able to make our bread, he says, we shall make our bread for the purpose of becoming disciples. In the Hebrew, it's very, very clear. After the day you are believed in Christ, you know very well, that's the moment itself. You are believing in Christ, you have been saved. Then what is the need for God the Father to sustain you on this earth? So that the variety of dishes that you taste for your flesh, you know, you have lot many dishes. And whenever you get even a single drop of water to drink, as he said, even a small cup of water they give in the name of a disciple unto you, they will be rewarded. And the small cup of water is nothing but the life of a disciple, what they are presenting to you. So the single cup of water, from there on till to the major, whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you would love to enjoy, in everything give thanks and you eat to guard the Father to sanctify the food. And any food which has come to you, for what purpose? Not to become obeys, not to become sluggards, not to become food lovers, but to become disciples, dear brethren. What for the word bread has been used? Lakem. The word lakem meant to say first disciple staff of t or shepherd staff of authority. And from there on you have in you the wall of separation. And from there on you have in you the blood which makes you to become disciples. Because when you say your blood is saying you have to become disciples, when you open up your mouth you need to talk about disciples. That's what in the church age we find the word being used 269 times as disciples, but the word as Christians only three times. The first time ever the Christians were named, they were the disciples being taught for one year the word of God and you cannot be far away from the reality. No doubt how great an intelligent orator you may be or a sheer a man you may be to talk about sheer words. The word of Lord God in Acts 11 says the first time Christians they were called, they were disciples and who were trained over there for more than one year in the teachings of the doctrine of Christ. So here, if ever you have anything to say, your blood should say disciples. You have anything bread to eat. It is a staff authority building up your wall and having your blood to become the disciples. And when they say we shall eat, their word for us over here to eat is nothing but the palm of your energy. And in the palm of your energy, he says again, we have to go and make disciples. Why? Because the word palm represents like a scribe. You write the word of God. And then when you realize you have to grow up to become like a scribe and Newton go and make disciples of all the nations, then you're starting to live a life which is of an absolute vigor, a life free from sickness, a life free from the worries of this life, a life that which could be absolutely free from the details of this life. So when you're eating the bread or the word says bread we eat, you have to say the bread being prepared is for the disciples and the blood which flows in us by demarcation of the wall talks about disciples and we shall eat or we shall have in the palm of the energy of our hand to be like the Lamad stick and we shall be the disciples and we shall do nothing but going disciples to make in our life because we are eating to become like a scribe. And then furthermore, whenever he says the raiment of us, we shall cloth. You know, again the word raiment. Again the word discipleship. Followed by the tent of your body. Followed by the munching of your food that you make in this body. 
So the word is very, very simple. The word raiment, when he says in Isaiah 64, that you shall throw away your raiments and you shall put upon like a woman being ordained or a bridegroom being ordained for the will and the work of the Lord. The raiments not only represents the highway of holiness, but also the weapons of warfare that the church has to wear and do the will of God. And the weapons of warfare for the church over here is nothing but first, she has to go and make disciples and that should be in her tent, that is in her body, and she should munch in going and making disciples. That's it. So that raiment, she says, we shall wear. How? No matter whatever pressure we may have like a thorn around us, we have in our blood to make disciples. And we have in us to fulfill the great commission of my Lord. That's in simple terms. The raiment we are wearing, we are wearing the clothes of the great warfare weapons of the Lord. And no matter whatever pressure we have, we have in us, no matter whatever the pressure right round around us, we are been having that in our blood to go and make disciples. And he says, we shall eat the bread of us. The bread is discipleship oriented program. And you are eating, that is the scribal authority to grow up in grace and to make disciples. And the raiment, again disciples oriented program. And you are wearing the clothes no matter whatever it is, you are still sustaining to do the will and the pleasure of the Lord. Whether it may be like thorns in you in and around. The people may be like so, so you don't mind. You go on to doing disciples, you go on to make scribes. And then he says, but he shall be called, name of you. What is the name of the Lord? Munching the word of God in our blood. That's the name of my Christ. And the word name over there, what has to munch in our head? If Christ our Lord our God is a head for every man, then for every woman it's a own husband. Then for Christ the head is Lord God, Lord God the Father. So it is, what name we have? We have in us the name of Christ. So our munching should be the blood and the blood what we are munching should be the word of God. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, our head should be filled with the word of God. So whenever you are eating and when you are wearing your clothes, your mission and your purpose is to perform what Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ has said. As Apostle Paul says then, for me to live is Christ and to die is profitable. That's what it meant to say over there for us. You have now in your head the word of God. You have in your munching the blood of God. You have nothing but from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to be like the word of God to this people and to perform the will of God to this people. Therefore he says, but he shall be called by your name on us and the reproach what has been there. What is the reproach? The word reproach is nothing but carape. And it meant to say, the suppression of the wall which has been in your head and comes out from your mouth. You know, the things that you talk about, the things that your tongue has been used, it talks about what is there in your heart. So he says, the wall of suppression, what you have put. And because of that wall of suppression, your head has been filled up with the stupid things of this life. And those things which are coming out, he says, that reproach, O oh Lord, remove from my mouth. Because I want to talk nothing but the word of God. So he says, that reproach. Because when we talk about the word of God, it will be for the way Satan being pricked up. It is the thorns which have been pricking up into the mouth of Satan. Therefore, the Lord of God says in the book of Ezekiel, even if you would look, the great commission, he says, my mouth you shall become, not the mouth of Satan. So what is there in the mouth of Satan? Whenever you talk the truth, whenever you become the disciples of the word of God, growing up into grammatias and doing the will of God the Father, Satan knows very well. It has been pricked like the thorn which has been pierced. So when you are being terminating that, you have been removing from your mind the wall being constructed by Satan not to know the truth, not to obey the truth, and not to learn the truth. So it's as simple as that, dear brother. It just pricks away, it just removes out. When you take in the real bread, the word of God, as he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So when you are taking that real bread to eat, the bread represented by the Lama's staff authority. 
teaching staff authority and building up in you the blood which could make you to understand that you have to be using your scribal authority or your palm of your energy in making to be the disciples of the word of God. So no matter what, the word of Lord God clearly exemplifies and teaches to us to become the bread and that bread we need to eat, the raiment what we wear, that raiment should be the clothes of Lord's work. At least like this woman, so that we could remove the reproach, are we waiting upon the Lord? No, dear brethren, we aren't waiting. But Joab hired a wise woman. She says the word kokma. But we aren't even like that Kokma woman. Neither we are waiting over here to reproach, to see that the reproach has been removed. And the word Kokma over here, when we look, it says for us very specifically, the wall which has been built by the scribal authority of your palm, and that will become your blood to flow in. That's Kokma. Do you have that? Do you have the Kokma authority in you? Then how we could say that the church could be a wise one tomorrow and she could be like Rebecca satisfying Isaac. How many of them will be qualified to be the wise ones in the presence of the Lord? The wise ones are the people who have made a separation on this earth and they have built upon a wall. And they are using the scribal authority of their hand to become blood in them, to become scribe. And that's what he claims over there in Joshua chapter 14, in verse 11, I am strong. He says, I have built up a wall, I am using my tools from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to dig the word of God. And furthermore, we look over here, dear brethren, when he says for us in verse number 11, I am Kazakh this day as I was in that day when Moses sent me. My strength was then and my strength is now. The word strength is kovach. And the word kovach in the pictographical representation represents nothing but two things over here. The first one, the scribal authority of your hand and the wall, what you have built by becoming a scribe. You know, when you become the word of God by becoming a kovach strength, by becoming like a scribal authority, when I've been building up such kind of a wall, you need to just take care of it by seeing that there is no crack. By that we meant to say, you don't neglect in guarding the word of God. You don't neglect in breathing the word of God. You don't neglect in eating the word of God. That's it. Be alert. Be careful. Be strong. And he says, my strength, as once I become a scribal authority and build up my wall, there is nothing that there could be someone to crack in that. And that wall he claims, the life from 2421 to 2425. And when you have entered in Leviticus 18.5, the life which God the Father has designed, it's a gabe, it's something high, it's something superior. The energy what you can have free from sickness, the energy what you can have free from death. Or free from mental attitudes, sins and anxieties and worries and the details of life. Such a life he has called for us because he knows that he is going to control everything for us because we completely trust him. As he first entrusted us, he puts his first trust. And so now we trust him. So he says, as my strength was then, so my strength is now. For what? He says, for war. And what is war, you know? Again, the word war is lakem. We read the word for bread. And the word for lakem is nothing but fighting in the sense with the bread when it is been needing. So, you take the lamat stuff, you build up a wall and that becomes your blood. So, you have in your fighting that you have to go and make disciples. You have built your wall upon that. And that's what your blood is all about now. So you don't worry, you don't fear. So he says, I need not fear about my blood. I need not fear about any things because it is Lord God who shall provide me in the battle everything needed for me. And what else could be a bread? We read that the bread should be nothing but 
to become as tribal disciples to the law. That's the word. Scribal oriented disciples to the law. So he says, my Kovac strength, my strength what I have built upon like a scribal authority, that strength is for now for a war. So in order to go and make disciples of all the nations, and he says to go out, that is having your pressure inside with the energy of your bull, and to come in, that is to have in you in your tent the energy of the bull. When you go out, it is the energy of the bull, the second beast. When you come in, it is also the energy of the bull. So you need not worry. You're going to make disciples, coming in and coming out in the energy of the bull, pressure within and pressure without, you're going to make disciples. Open up your mouth to make disciples. Open up your mouth to grow up because of the strength given to you of a coach. You are demarcated yourselves in the scribal authority of your palm and you are there in making disciples. Go ahead, not worry. But are we wise enough to say at least like this Caleb, at least like that woman who had nothing but in her hand to become, the wall being separated, to become in her blood the disciples of the Word of God. She has been separated to become nothing but the disciples of the Word of God. And what is happening today, dear brethren, in our pulpits? There aren't enough men to know the importance of this word. So, in Second Samuel chapter 14, in verse 2, when he said, He fetched for him a wise woman, that wise woman in a scribal authority, she is having that in her blood to demark the world and to build up a wall of fortification to be the word of God. And that life is what God the Father has designed for us to grow up from 2421 to 2425 code of life, Kaya. And how many days more we want to be still left behind not to live such a life. It's left to you, dear brother, and because it's your life. And if you're not able to make it up to the praise of His glory, if you're not able to make it up to the will to walk worthy, then purely your failure, your failure to diligently search the true life, your failure to understand not the will of God, your failure not to love the Lord, but you are successful in hating the Lord. Because you divert the things pertaining to the pricking of the thorns in you, and you go to your comfort zones. That's what hating is all about. The word says, every day assemble for the word of God. You don't love my Lord. You hate, therefore you make it to become comfort zone only on Sunday ones. Every day you need to pay back the tithes to the Lord of a God, the tithe of your time. Two hours, 40 minutes. You make your comfort zone to pay in your income, monthly ones. What are your comfort zones that you really hate to sacrifice to the Lord? Therefore, in the book of Psalms, in chapter 119, he said, I hate them with perfect hatred, those who have ignored thy word. Rivers of water flow from my head, because they haven't honored thy word. And we cannot be friendly with you, because the line is very simple. Either the life of Kainiketesis, or the life of Bios for you. The rest of the time of your life, he said in 1 Peter 4.2, do not spend to the details of life. Do not spend to the lusts of your life. But rather serve the will of God the Father. That's kinekites, spiritual species in Christ. And those who are spiritually born again in the Lord, they don't love to make again sin in the Lord. They don't love. They don't have any time. Because they know now, grieving the Holy Spirit of God, squelching the Holy Spirit of God, Waxing and resisting and lying to the Holy Spirit of God is our death. But we need to be alert using the prayers of our priesthood in confession of our sins. To serve back Lord of a God which is not a license to sin but a license to serve our Lord. And make the will of Lord God the Father to be absolutely available. For the very purpose what he has kept us alive. Because... Living in the Spirit is what we are breathing. And if ever we breathe 
we need to walk in the Spirit. And whenever we are walking, we need to march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh and grieve and squelch, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, yet the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith he shall not acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest part is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the link Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to understand the foolish woman and the wise woman, the love and the hatred that this people keep upon thee. Help us, Father, to train them up the very blood what they eat and the very blood what they have and the bread what they eat should be for the only discipleship-oriented program and they should be the scribal authoritative disciples making men on this earth so that they could say that they have fought a good fight on this earth and their works could follow them after this rest in the Lord when they die in Christ. So, Father, we commit everything into thy mighty hands. We pray the present situations on this earth, how they are, you know very well. Kindly lead us according to thy glory, and guide us according to thy counsel, and make us to be thy mouth, to preach and teach nothing but your will. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.